The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Welcome everybody to the Wednesday Night Habits of Health on Zoom. My name is Dr. JC Dornick and uh, I'm humbled to be here, to be honest. I'm, I'm a certified health coach. Um, you'll hear a little bit about my story. I went on this program 12 years ago um, and uh, a lot has changed, but I'm humbled to be here because I know that this is a crowd that it's an even mix of people on program, people maybe that have fallen off program, people that are kind of like in between, and then our most successful people on program, those are that are paying it forward and all, all of our health coach community because coaches are clients. Um, so I just wanna welcome everybody and uh, both say that I'm humbled to be here, not only with you, but with some amazing people that are gonna share tonight. And uh, I take this as a very, very big responsibility that um, I have this opportunity to share some things because every time we share, we hear stories, who knows what's gonna happen. So let's kick this off because I wanna get through my part so we can hear these amazing stories. Um, let's face it, we're gonna talk about this idea of discipline and how it's different. So let's face it for a second. There's something wrong with us. <laughs> there's, there's something very, very wrong with all of you and us. And what I mean by that is if you compare what we're doing and how we're looking at the world and how we're practicing and moving towards health, it's different than the herd. Now, what I mean by the herd is I mean the masses. You know, when you look at things like, um, you know, doing things within reason, when you look at things like, hey, just be normal or be ordinary, those are things that are done by the herd. Now, another thing that happens in the herd, you're going to hear from a cardiologist later, if you think about all these statistics that we hear about with disease and obesity and all the things associated with it, keep in mind that the majority of people out there are in the herd. So the herd represents where the statistics are coming from. So I just want you to look at the size of that circle, that's the herd, and understand why there's something very, very abnormal about you, unreasonable and also unordinary. And that is, you are moving towards a place of creating health. Now, what's happening with our, with our company and with our movement, God, we're going international now, is this, right? So when we say our mission is to get America healthy and now get the world healthy, that's how we do it. So I wanna just take this opportunity right now and thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for simply being in motion, for having your life in motion. Remember, lots and lots has changed, you know? Nobody's perfect, but lots and lots has changed. So what you're gonna learn tonight, and you're gonna learn it through stories, my story will be a little bit shorter because I wanna get to these like unbelievable stories, but it's just about self-discipline. You know, when I first decided to get healthy, I was under the impression that the timing needed to be right, I needed to be motivated, and I needed to believe in myself, and guess what? That's why I was overweight most of my life, right? And it's just like, uh, for those of you that are parents, you know, uh, put a one in the chat right now if you are a parent, because parents, are, parents understand this right now, like, look at all the chat, everybody's, except for Chase, right? Chase is only 22, but you're gonna meet her in a second. So, just think about that, you know, we do things differently when we take responsibility, right? So for those of you that are parents, you understand the idea of being disciplined in certain fashions. So look at this definition that I found out, because we don't need to believe, Dr. Ray taught us, we don't need to believe in ourselves. We don't need to have the right timing. We just need to simply decide what we want. I like to say, put up your dukes, right? Because my first duke is what I want. And my second duke is my why. 
All we need to do is know what we want and move towards it. And we have this unfair advantage called the four components that I know all of you have heard about that gives us the ability and the structure, which sure helps. That's an unfair advantage. So self-discipline, as I looked it up from this dictionary, is the correction or regulation of oneself for the sake of improvement. So you have this idea and this goal for improvement, so you practice discipline, but it starts small. So I love this. Discipline is the friend that will never let you down. I want you to think about this right now. When have you ever practiced discipline and it's let you down? There's only one. Think about all of your bad habits that you have. Folks, you've worked really, really hard to create those bad habits, right? Bad habits don't just pop up one day, right? We are disciplined sometimes in building bad habits. So we can use the same principle, little by little, installing little habits of health one at a time to build towards health. That's what Dr. Ray refers to as a life in motion. So let me put it into perspective just quickly. I want to keep my time. So this is my before and after picture. So now just as a reference, 12 years ago, I went on this program and that's me with my son Jackson on my right knee with a shovel. And that little kid that's crying is crying because I picked him up out of the sand and I covered my left love handle with it. I used to swim with my shirt on folks, right? So that's my before picture. And then you see my after picture and you say, oh my God, this program must be amazing. This guy lost almost 80 pounds and has kept it off for 12 years. So you look at that, but what you can't see in that picture is the space between, right? What you can't see in that picture is when I started this journey and God, that close up of my face just like gives me an anxiety attack because I look at that and I just remember that that face before I started this program is really saying, please help me. Please help me because I'm going through marriage problems. I'm depressed because I'm a workaholic and I never see my kids and I'm medicating myself with food. That's what that face looks like. So discipline for me when I first started was just drinking a little bit more water and it started with doing the five in one, one day which was not easy. I did it one day, which went into two days. I made it through a week with the help of the four components and my coach. So discipline for me began that way. But if you go all the way to the other side, first of all, my real after picture is not something that I ever thought. I thought I was just going to lose weight, guys. I thought that if I practice discipline and, and my discipline grew, my self-efficacy of, of losing those first 10 pounds made me into a new person that could practice new elements of discipline. If you understand what I'm saying and you're going through that journey right now and you might all of a sudden be having an awakening that you are actually kicking butt on this program, but you might have set your goal too far and you're just right in this moment, you're doing really well, just say, I understand. Type in there, I understand, and chat. And let everybody know that we're the same. So my after-after picture is actually me slim, but it's me as a health, as, as a, uh, a health coach, because that's when I have my time freedom, but it's also me as the head coach of my child's football game, because see, that's what I really wanted. And if you were to meet me now and see what I look like and what I practice in the gym, I mean, I'm in the gym every day at 4.30 in the morning. I eat perfectly healthy. This is 12 years later. That version of me on the beach would never, ever have believed that he could be this way. He would think that you're absolutely crazy because all he wanted to do was lose weight. Just the same, when I look back at that version of me on the beach, I say, how the heck did I ever get that way? So here's what I mean before we get into the, getting to our first guest, which is going to blow your mind. And I see everybody is, is chiming in. So you guys all dig this. Discipline is about making these little corrections, which very often means not doing something and doing something new. And Dr. Ray always says, all you got to do is know what you want and move towards it by starting small. But what happens is it's called peak to peak. Once you get to that first mountain, you actually gain the ability to see the next mountain. So what I've done, and these people that you're about to meet have done, is slowly but surely, using this program, all four components, slowly but surely, have increased our self-efficacy, our confidence, our, our mindset changed 
to the point where we started practicing things that we never ever thought we would do. So why, why is this important for you tonight as we move forward? Because anybody can do this. Just follow the program, follow the recipe. It will make a perfect meal for you. Okay, so let's get going to the next person. Oh, there's my, there's my freakazoid picture. So there's me in, in, in perfect shape. If you would have showed me that picture, I would have thought you were on drugs or something. There's no way I would ever be like that because I had to get to a new place to be able to even think about getting in shape. All right, check this out. So anybody ever seen these pictures on Facebook and all over media and they go, no freaking way. There's no way that that is a real picture. And everybody says, is this real? Is this phony baloney? Well, how about we meet one of these people and we put these elements of what we're talking about into terms. So I would like to introduce, now I've had the honor of co-coaching um, with another coach, her amazing coach, Rachel Reese. I remember I met Chase right in the beginning and uh, she was a totally different person and look at her now. So I wanna give her the spread and Chad, Chase, how are you doing? Thanks for being with us. Um, tell us a little bit about maybe who you are and, and implement this, this kind of storyline for us. What happened to you? Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm so happy to be here with you all tonight. And I'm sorry about all the wrestling around. I'm in a hotel right now. So the lights keep shutting off. Um, and I'm so, again, I'm so happy to be here and to present to you guys and kind of give you guys an idea of what my journey was like from the beginning until now. Um, just like JC said, especially within his transformation, if I were to look at myself two years ago now, I, I wouldn't have thought this was going to be me. I didn't think that this was possible. When I saw pictures like this, I thought, this is fake, this is photoshopped, and this is something that only can happen once in a lifetime, and it's never going to happen to me. So my story is, is I met my health coach at 335 pounds, and when that picture in the before and after was taken was when I had first started program. Um, so I was 335 pounds in New York City. I had to buy a double plane ticket to get there. Um, I wasn't drinking water. I was drinking way more, I was eating way more than six to seven times a day. I'm talking in like Chick-fil-A, in and out whatever, what have you, I was eating it. Um, so when I met with my health coach, she sat down with me across from a table. And the first thing she told me was, is you're going to start drinking water. Um, and for me, this was a big deal because I was not a water drinker, um, not even a coffee drinker, but I loved Coke. That was my, that was my like just absolute drug of choice. Coke was my favorite. Um, so when she told me that I was going to start drinking water um, just in the beginning before I started a uh, program, so within the like first four days before getting my box, I was really skeptical. Um, I was thinking, how is this going to work? What's going to happen? So I started drinking 64 ounces to start. I carried around a 32 ounce water bottle and it started from there and from drinking my water and getting that in. And then, you know, when I got my box that first day, I ate my, my fuelings every two to three hours. And like JC said, was the first day hard? Absolutely. It was very hard because it was different. And one thing I learned throughout this entire process is you are what you are because of practice. You know, there's really, you know, you can't get good at something. You know, the top horseback riders or the top football players, they're not good at it because they did it for one day. They're good at it because they did it every single day. They became that. They became what they wanted to be. Um, and I always like to say to be and not to seem. So um, by taking that water and taking, you know, my fuelings and eating those two to three hours a day, I was able to overcome things that I didn't think were possible. Um, and, you know, for obviously for me, I lost 210 pounds. Some people come on here to lose 10 pounds and that's fine. It's the same thing. It's getting those small habits down and making it into a lifestyle. So Chase, um, first of all, I don't know if you're able to, to see the chat, but it's blowing up. So I think everybody, I mean, you're all blown away right now. And what you don't know, because she didn't tell you, is that Chase is actually 22 years old. Um, she just celebrated her birthday, I think, two days ago, right, Chase? Yeah, a couple, January 17th. January 17th. So please, in the chat box, everybody say happy birthday to Chase. Sing happy birthday with your cat. Oh, you and, also, and also, I figured I'd give you a couple thousand happy birthdays. But yes. here's something, Chase, here's something that I want everybody to understand. You did this. Now, 
Chase is a fun girl. She travels. She likes to go to dance parties and things like that. Chase did this while she was in college, folks. So I remember I met Chase, and th those were a lot of challenges. So she had to get through that. But Chase, I remember we were talking a little bit today about this, how when you were in that first picture, talk a little bit how you kind of identified as being that way, like, I remember you were a model, you were, you were modeling plus size clothes and stuff. And that was kind of who you were and you wore it well, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And you know, when I was when I was overweight, I, um, you know, I, I had kind of just gotten used to the fact that that was going to be my life. And I really tried to make it the best that I could, you know, by modeling and being proud of my body. And I still to this day, I'm 100% for body positivity. But it's amazing to see, you know, now, you know, after losing 210 pounds, it's a completely different spectrum of people that I've surrounded myself with. I mean, my Instagram is completely different. I mean, it, this has changed every aspect of the way that I live my life from the, the way that I dress, from the people I hang out with. I mean, it has just tra transformed everything. And it's, it's absolutely amazing. It really is. Chase, take a look at the new version of you and obviously you're dressing different you have different confidence and things like that but in relation to how you practice health right now like look at your day and what you eat and exercise and things like that what is like just explain like what are the major differences in how you live your life right now compared to them that that just are a quantum leap away like what are the big differences let me get this light back. Yeah, we can still see you. There we go. I don't know why these lights keep going off, you guys. So I'm just going to keep going. Anyway, so um, this is how you have to do it. This is life. You just kind of have to roll with it, whatever yeah, happens. It. Um, so, yeah, so just, I guess, comparing and contrasting where I was when I was, you know, overweight versus now um, and the things that I've implemented. Again, it, for me, it's just, you know, even when I go out to eat, I always, I, for me, I'm actually, I've already transitioned and I'm on maintenance. So, you know, I do incorporate my fueling still into my lifestyle, but I'm following the plan. You know, I still to this day follow this plan. And when I was overweight, I was following the plan of my desires. I was, I was wanting my desires over reasoning. I knew not to eat Chick-fil-A four times a day, but I still chose to do it because that's what I wanted and that's what I thought I needed. And now my reasoning and my desires are completely different just through taking those small habits. You know, now I crave water. Now I crave protein. Now I crave, you know, I mean, just being healthy. And, and like you said about going to the gym, I, I, at, 300, at 335 pounds, I couldn't have gone to the gym and done the things that I do now. I couldn't have ridden horses. I couldn't have done any of these things. And it took over the course of losing 210 pounds to start you know, bringing together things one step at a time fixing things as they came. And, you know, if that was, you know, starting with 64 ounces of water and now I drink 120, my first six months I did 64 ounces. And then after that, I started getting, you know, bringing it up a little bit higher. It's, it's a work in progress. And the first thing I was told on this program is never compare your beginning to somebody else's middle or you're going to get completely burnt out. Um, and that was really important for me to hear because, you know, I saw people like you and like Rachel, my coach, and I was like, wow, you know, I really want to be like that. But it's so easy to get discouraged if you don't give yourself a chance to just take easy and small steps fixing your reasoning as you go, changing your desires as you go. And when you put your foot forward and you make those steps, then you'll be able to you know, get to where you wanna be. I love it. Um, first of all, everybody maybe throw a uh, oh my God in the chat one last time before, before uh, Chase goes. And Chase actually has completely fulfilled and, and completed her trilogy. She's become a health coach. She's 22 years old. And this is a product of a fully integrated, full transformation. You know, you reminded me of something. I always say that when I was overweight, my favorite food was chicken parmesan and pizza, right? And I had no willpower. And now 
in my new state, my favorite food is still chicken parm and pizza. And I don't have much willpower, but I just have something that I like more than chicken parm and pizza. And that is feeling healthy, taking well, my shirt off at the pool and everything. And I think also, you know, another great thing that this program has given me is the ability to, you know, it's, a, you know, when you reach your goal, at least in my opinion, it's okay to treat yourself. And what makes it okay is understanding that you're choosing, you know, when I was overweight, I was not in control. You know, now I'm in control. If I want to have a little sweet, that's okay. But I'm in control of the situation. And like you said, when you implement these small things and you get to that ability, it makes all of the difference. Awesome. Thank so you so is. much, Chase. And uh, remember, Chase got through this by having a what and a why. We call that putting up your dukes. Throw that in the chat. And uh, awesome, Chase. Thanks so much. All right. So... Moving on, um, I want to show you another before and after picture, right? And this is a very close friend of mine and uh, someone that I've known for quite some time. And I never saw his before picture until the other day. He showed it to me and I said, oh my God, Mark, that was you. So I want to introduce Dr. Mark Nelson, who has completely transformed his life. And Mark is the guy that when you find out about who he is and where he's been, um, what he's struggled with, and also how old he is now, which you won't believe. <clears throat> Mark's the guy that you walk in the gym and you say, oh my God, look at that guy. But once again, you don't know where he came from and how he got there. So let's hear his story. Introducing certified health coach, my very, very good friend, Dr. Mark Nelson. Mark, are you there? Yes, I am, JC. And thank you so much for... Uh... <clears throat> for hosting this Zoom and as always, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. And I don't know what I can say after Chase's story. I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I threw you after Chase, Mark. Oh my gosh, you like- I'm looking you at know. your pictures right now and I, I, I see just as a powerful the transformation. Well, you know, I, I mean, I think the question of discipline is, is, is important and I'm, I'm so glad you're raising it because it's often used in terms of harshness or of punishment, that's not what we're talking about. We're really talking about persistence, perseverance, and patience. You know, it's the small steps that we take. As Lasu said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. That's really the principle. It's the first fueling that you take. It's the first glass of water. It's the first walk that you take. It's the first time maybe you sit and meditate for a minute and realize, wow, this is different, but you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. You know, 12 years ago, I was 200 pounds, stressed out, burned out, um, not enjoying my life, not very healthy <laughs> as, as a cardiologist. And the good news is I, I realized that I discovered this program. And what changed was many things in my life, but most of all, my thinking. Because as we, we know, our, our, our thoughts and feelings aren't good or bad, they just are. The question is, are we aware of them and what do we do with them? So the first thing we need to achieve, I think, is, is, is some discipline in terms of our thinking. Let me give you an example. You know, I do kettlebells now and I've been doing them for about two years. And um, there's a move in kettlebells that's called a Turkish getup and those of you who do kettlebells are aware of that. It's fairly complicated. And I saw a guy doing a Turkish getup with a 24 kilo bell, which is about 52 pounds. And I was new to kettlebells. I mean, I was fairly strong, but not like now. And so I remember standing watching him and thinking, I could never do that. The good news is I recognized that thought immediately. And I said, Mark, if you believe that and tell yourself that, you're right, you never will. So what I started to do was to continue to work out. And I think one of the most important things was that I took small steps and I was never satisfied with where I was. I was always pushing the envelope, not in a really big way, but in small steps so I could increase my strength, my endurance, my flexibility. So at 71 years old, I'm stronger now than I've ever Wait been. Wait a second, Mark. What did you just say? I said at 71 years old. Okay, I was just checking. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm stronger now than I've ever been in my entire life, actually. And that's about discipline, but really about small disciplines, small steps, day by day, step by step. And, and I think another thing that's really important is we always talk about focusing on the goal. It's important to, to be aware of the goal and remember it and know it's there. But the focus, in my experience, the focus should be on the path, on the steps you take, on the work that you do. You know, there's nothing wrong with hard work. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. It keeps us alive, right? And so knowing where we are, knowing what we want, and taking the steps to get there. And when we make the decision to create something for ourselves, just like JC has done, just like Chase has done, just like anyone who has decided to do this program or to grow a business has done. When we make the decision, it's not hard, it's not easy. Those frameworks, in my opinion, which are completely artificial constructs, lose all relevance because once you make the decision, you do it because you want to. <laughs> That's why you do it. You do it so people say to me, Mark, you're, you're pressing a, a 32 kilo bell over your head. That's about 70 pounds. I can do that with one arm, right? Now, I'm not satisfied with that, by the way, right? I just bought a 75 kilogram bell, pound bell, because I'm moving up and there isn't one in the gym. I'm just saying where I train. So people would say, well, isn't that hard? I say, no, it's not hard. I said, it's, it's challenging, but it's not hard, meaning... I do it because I want to do it. I have made that decision. I made that decision long ago. Once you make the decision, forget hard and easy. You simply do it. I do it because that's the journey. I'm enjoying the journey. I love what I'm doing. And what Shay spoke to and Dr. Dornick spoke to, I think most importantly, is, is to know what you want and why you want it. If it's meaningful to you, that intrinsic motivation is the fuel for the fire. Discipline is the bridge between dreams and goals and creating and accomplishing those. Jim Rohn said that, and he was, he was right on. So discipline isn't about beating yourself up. It's not about denying yourself things. It's not about hurting yourself or torturing yourself or, or being whatever. Discipline is simply the understanding that making small choices day in and day out, in any direction, can create in your life any goal, any health goal, any life goal that you want, if you want it. It's simply doing the work, DTW, one step, one day at a time. I love that. You know, I've, I've actually had the pleasure over the years of, because I met Mark right when he began, we kind of started this journey together. And I just remember incrementally all those times we'd run into this, each other in the gym and you'd be doing something and I'd try it. And I'd be doing something and you'd try it. And we didn't know what the heck we were doing, but every now and then we'd find something that we really liked and we'd go. Um, I want to share with, with you um, this concept that we all have when we look at somebody that has achieved a before and after and we say, that's unbelievable, right? We use that term a lot. We say, it's unbelievable. Well, guess what? You don't have to believe in anything. You just have to decide what you want and why. I have a mortality mentality, folks. We only have this much time. All you need to do is decide what you want and why, and that's called your flame. And as Mark said, do things, small incremental things over time that feed your flame. Stay away from people that douse your flame. Stay away from things that douse your flame. Our community is so strong because it feeds our flame. And the last thing I'll say is remember something. We were all born with skills and abilities. Ask your mom. Ask your, ask, ask your parents, ask your best friends. Discipline means that we are going to start developing those and nurturing those skills and abilities. So Mark, Chase, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, what an amazing opportunity. What a humbling opportunity to, to host this with so many people, like almost 2000 plus and all the, the, the chats. Thank you so much. 
This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results related in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.